What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into Doctor Strange, Nexus of Nightmares. In this one-shot issue, we have writer Ralph Macchio. He is diving us into the nightmares of Doctor Strange. We are going to see if the Sorcerer Supreme is able to take on the Dream Doctor. Dimension. And if you haven't been keeping up with the ongoing Strange line, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything going on with that series. One last thing before we jump into this issue, we hit 25,000 subscribers. This is 25% of my overall current long-term goal. And I cannot thank all of you enough for everything that you have helped me do. If it were not for you guys, this channel would not exist. And so because of this, we're going to be doing a giveaway. We'll be giving away one comic to five people. All you have to do is be subscribed to the channel, like the video, and comment down in the comment section. And then probably in a week or two, we'll come back to it. And that's when we'll do our drawing. I'll be sure to announce it in other videos and the community tab. With that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up at the home of Baron Mordu, the castle that is in Transylvania, once home to Dracula himself. Ever since their relocation, Baron has found this as his new safe haven. But deep inside of these halls, right now he is working on talking to somebody that is going to help him get the dark hold. With a little bit of meditation, he finds himself in the dream dimension, coming face to face with the one and only Nightmare. And many of us know who Nightmare is. He is more or less the Lord of the Dream Dimension. He is the most powerful being that has ever existed in this dimension. Being so powerful that even when the Beyonders made their arrival in the Dream Dimension, he was easily able to crush them. Nightmare having much bigger ambitions, wanting to take over the entirety of the world. That's where Baron comes into play. Because Baron knows the location of the Dark Hole, the one book that will be able to break Nightmare out and let him traverse the world, wreaking havoc everywhere. So to accomplish this goal, they have to go to the home of Stephen Strange. Sitting on a bookshelf in the Sanctum, this is where they will find this book. Taking us to 177A Bleecker Street, we are picking up with Stephen Strange and Wong. And what we are seeing is that Doctor Strange, he's having a very hard time. That is because Baron this whole time, what he has been doing is slowly working down the spell that surrounds the Sanctum. This gave Nightmare the opportunity to infect Doctor Strange's dreams. But for Doctor Strange, this is something that he is not aware of just yet. What he does know is that he has been going through these nightmares every single night. And it, it is starting to make him doubt himself his abilities, the person that he used to be. This has brought so much uncertainty to the surface, and this uncertainty could very easily be his downfall. With Doctor Strange just completely drained from all of these nightmares and all of these emotions that have been rising up, he goes up to his room, he lays down, and he drifts into the dream dimension. And as he begins to go through this dream, this is the story of Doctor Strange's life. Prior to him becoming the Sorcerer Supreme, before he dabbled in the magic arts, he was the best neurosurgeon the world had ever seen. Nobody could do it better than he could. Not being a modest man, not being a humble man, he definitely knew that he was the best. And because of this, it made him very arrogant. It made him very cocky. And it also made it all about the money. Even turning down individuals that he could help. But he chooses not to because their wallets just aren't big enough. 
And then there was the crash. The crash that took his hands, that caused the nerve damage, made it to where he would never be a neurosurgeon ever again. He went to every single expert. He went to anybody who would try to help him out. But at the end of the day, there was nothing. That is, until he heard about the Ancient One traveling through the mountains until he finds this temple. This is where he meets the Ancient One, the Ancient One hearing of his story and lets him know that he will help him, but only if he can prove himself worthy. After being here for several days, he goes to the Ancient One, and at this point, he is desperate, he is frantic, and he wants some immediate attention to his hands. And though he tries to make demands, he quickly realizes that none of his power, none of his influence, his name, nothing matters. The truth is, the Ancient One doesn't care what he has to say. Being a man that needs to learn the virtues of patience, he centers himself and he walks out of the room. But in doing so, he hears Baron having a conversation, being one of the students underneath the Ancient One. He is talking about taking the Ancient One out, removing him completely, and taking the power for himself. When Doctor Strange goes to tell the Ancient One of this news, of this deception, the Ancient One doesn't hear him, tells him that he is jealous, tells him that he is trying to just get his way. And so the Ancient One casts him out of the temple. At this point, Doctor Strange has been talking in his sleep. Wong rushes upstairs and wakes him up, explaining everything that happened to Wong. Doctor Strange knows that this has affected his state in the physical world. Hearing some kind of crash coming from downstairs, Doctor Strange, he walks down there and he finds Baron Mordu. This is exactly what they have been trying to do. This knocks down the barrier that would prevent him from ever walking into the Sanctum. With his physical state being in such a weakened position, Baron has come here for the Dark Hole. Of course, the Sorcerer Supreme not going to allow this to happen. We see the battle get underway. Doctor Strange making the first attack, but with him not being at 100%, we are seeing that Doctor Strange, he could possibly lose this battle. Doctor Strange still at this point has no idea what Nightmare has been up to, but Baron, he knows, and he plays on this, telling him that he senses the weakness, the fatigue inside of his body. And as Baron throws everything he has at Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange is able to deflect every single one of them. That is, until Baron is able to summon the Clinging Clamp. This clamp goes around his neck, and it is temporarily suffocating him. And while it will disappear once Baron leaves, this gives him the opportunity to go get the Dark Hold. With Wong being the last line of defense, he is easily taken down, wrapped up, and now we see Baron going to get that book. Them two finally being able to piece together what exactly is going on. Getting the Dark Hold so that they can bring Nightmare to their dimension. Recognizing that they have to stop him before it is too late. Doctor Strange is a little bit concerned. All of this corrosive doubt that is eating through his subconscious, it is making him less powerful. Knowing this information, he says that he is going to be casting aside all of this doubt. Because at the end of the day, he was chosen by the Ancient One to be the Sorcerer Supreme. In Transylvania, we have Baron who is currently reading out of the Dark Hold. As the sky begins to rip open, we see tentacles and many other things starting to come through to this dimension. But before Baron can finish his speech, before he can finish reading this mantra, before Nightmare is fully allowed into this dimension, we see the arrival of Doctor Strange. With our Sorcerer Supreme wasting no time, he goes in for the attack. Baron puts him in a sphere of containment, believing that Doctor Strange won't be able to break out of this. He is yet another individual to underestimate Doctor Strange. And one by one, these two start hurling magical spells at one another. Everything that Baron sends at him, we see Doctor Strange able to knock down, using the whirling winds of Watum. 
we see Baron go flying in the opposite direction, knocking him down to the ground. This gives the Sorcerer Supreme the opportunity to grab hold of the Dark Hold. As the Sorcerer Supreme looks up to the sky, this is where he sees Nightmare. His face poking through this hole in reality, this hole in the dimension. We see him grab Mordu and bring him into the dream dimension. His arrogance had gotten the better of him. He tried being the most powerful. He tried doing all of this stuff for Nightmare, but he ultimately failed. And because of this, he is going to go into the dream world and suffer for all of eternity. Being drug off into the dream dimension, he is begging for Doctor Strange to help him. Doctor Strange unwilling to do so. And that's because Baron this whole time has been willing to sacrifice their reality. Also that he could get Nightmare here, try to become one with Nightmare, and rule side by side together. With our Sorcerer Supreme letting him know that this is your bed, it is time that you lay in it. And so the world will never know, the waking world will never know that this day, Stephen Strange had saved the world from complete and utter destruction. From becoming Nightmare's Legion. Headed back home, recognizing that the Darkhold is much more sought after than he actually believed. He puts it back into the library, but he also makes sure that he puts over a, a spell of concealment. An opportunity to actually hide it and not have somebody walk in and just grab the book off the shelf like Baron had just done. And he also thanks Wong, because if it weren't for Wong and his kind words, letting him know that he was chosen for a reason, then Doctor Strange might not have been able to push past all of this doubt that had been building up inside of him. And while he really does pity Mordu, especially after everything that he is about to endure, the truth is, Doctor Strange believes that there was little he could do to prevent his capture. With Doctor Strange headed up to bed, he is finally getting a good night rest. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I think this was a fun little one-shot issue for someone like Ralph Macchio to just get an opportunity to really make some kind of impact with a character that they enjoy. Now, of course, this is obviously playing outside of the of the 616 reality that we currently have ongoing because Clea Strange right now is Sorceress Supreme. I was really hoping that this had something to do with Doctor Strange possibly in purgatory or maybe even in hell, trying to fight his way from the afterlife back into the regular world. But with this being a one-shot, I also don't mind that. And it's a nice little story we get to have some fun with nightmare because we really don't get to see him that often i can probably count on one hand the amount of times that i have seen nightmare in the last two years but yeah all in all i gotta say i thoroughly enjoyed it the artwork was a lot of fun the writing was definitely on par with how these characters would interact not only with one another but really understanding their personality traits and what drives them to be better people. Or in the case of Mordu, what drives them to have more power. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. If you can't do that, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, make sure you like this video, and until the next breakdown.